U.S. Army 2nd Lieutenant Karan Nazario filed a lawsuit this month, claiming his rights were violated during an encounter with then Windsor, Virginia police officer Joe Gutierrez and Daniel Crocker. The lawsuit, first obtained by The Washington Post, says Nazario is asking for at least $1 million in damages and for the court to rule his constitutional rights were violated. Nazario's lawsuit claimed he was originally pulled over for not having a rear license plate, but video shows he had a temporary plate in the car window. We should note the video was provided by the attorney for Nazario. Officer Croco, Crocker wrote in his report that he believed Nazario was eluding police and called it a high-risk traffic stop. Wonder why, though? Let's take a look. Get out of the car! Get out of the car now! What's going on? You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. Get out the car! You received an order. Obey it. I, I'm. A I'm honestly afraid to get out. Can I? Yeah, you, you should be. Get out. Back up. Whoa, hold on. Daniel. What's going on? Hold on. My door. Air Force OC is deployed. Get out of the car and get on the ground now. You're going to get it again. I, I don't even want to reach my seat. Okay. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. Uh, Nazario heard uh, there saying he didn't want to reach for a seatbelt. One of the reasons why is because sometimes when somebody reaches into their car, they think they're reaching for a gun. I don't know why they put this man in this position. The Army lieutenant was eventually released without being charged in an incident report from Gutierrez. The officer wrote they decided against charges because they didn't want to, they didn't want the stop to affect Nazario's military rank. Are you kidding me? It really should. It so, should affect the rank of the officer that, 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 that behaved extraordinarily. Nazario's uh, lawyer horrible. says the lieutenant was threatened not to report the incident if he didn't want his career destroyed. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam responded in a statement yesterday saying, quote, the incident in Windsor is disturbing and angered me. I am directing the Virginia State Police to conduct an independent investigation. Officials from Windsor, Virginia, said the officers failed to follow use of force policies and Officer Gutierrez has been fired. NBC News has reached out to both officers involved for comment but has not heard back. And, Joe, we watched this video in its entirety. It starts back in the car with the officers before they open the door and even get out. They draw their guns right away. And we said to each other, we'd be afraid to get out if two cops were pointing loaded guns at us, screaming at the top of their lungs. I, I, this escalated because there was so much fear involved from the get-go, fear that didn't need to be there. I, 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 as a, as a six-foot-four white they man— They pepper sprayed him. —from the South, if I were in the lieutenant's position— and I had a police officer this out of control, and I was showing my hands, showing my arms outside of the window, and I, I stated that I was afraid to get out of the car, and for good reason, because this hands. officer was so amped up, out of control crazy, then, then, then if, if, if I were afraid being in that position, what about a black man who has seen time and again throughout his life uh, that black men especially are treated differently uh, than other Americans when it comes to being stopped in the car? And Eddie Gloud, he did everything correctly. He was fearful for good reason. So what did he do? He drove to a well-lit area. Hopefully where with everybody cameras. could see, hoping that cameras were there. He wanted to make sure that everybody saw everything that happened. They drew their guns on a guy, uh, on a lieutenant, <laughs> for God's sakes, a lieutenant serving our country, protecting us every day, a lieutenant in uniform who put his hands outside of the car and continued to be told to show his hands. But get out of the car at the same time. I, Eddie, this, this was, well, uh, as Mika was saying, this was just absolutely 
offensive. A lieutenant who probably has mental health uh, effects from something that happened in America rather than what happened when he was serving abroad. Can well, you imagine? Well, and, and even asking them to take care of his dog in the back seat, uh, who had obviously or was probably choking on the pepper spray as well. This is disgusting. I, I really, I, 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 the governor and, and, and the police officers, the people that lead the police officers in this area, in this state, need to figure out how the hell this happened. This is sickening, especially Eddie Gloud. If they are this insensitive right. during the George Floyd trial, then there really is little, little hope for, for this officer or any of these officers. Right. Right, Joe. So the, the interesting thing is that this officer may very well get, you know, he was fired. He may very well be hired within, you know, a month or so at another police, at another police office, uh, uh, police station. But look, it's very difficult for black folk in this moment to give police officers the benefit of the doubt that they're going to treat us like human beings. Right. So here we have this moment where as soon as you pull into the lighted gas station, Joe, you see that he has a temporary tag in his window. So the very reason for the stop is no longer no longer obtains. And then you get out with your guns pointed and you end up in this situation where this lieutenant is on the ground weeping, asking, why are you treating me like this? And I think it's important for us to connect this moment, Joe, with what we saw last night, because the death, mm -hmm. the murder at the end is the consequence of a form of policing that eventuates in the death. So what we have to do is begin to look at how are black folk being policed. Joe, you never have to worry about, you, if you ever have to worry about your child being killed by a police officer because of a traffic stop, getting the call that Dante Wright's mom got, father got, do you ever worry that a police officer will kill your child because of air freshener hanging from the rear view mirror? Or that I, your husband, Joe, will get stopped and then put on the ground, handcuffed, threatened to be lit up with lightning, called a corporal, a specialist. And then when he says, I'm yeah. a second lieutenant, told to get on the ground, humiliated, brought to tears. Do you ever think you would experience cuffs. that? So the killing, the death is the consequence, y'all, of a form of policing that leads up to the confrontation. That's what we have to yeah. address. We always address it at the end. And we're not getting to the process, what happens between the stop and the death that is actually the precipitating so he, the events, precipitating events. And, and we and, and and because we don't have time to show the whole thing, I ask everybody at home to please, if you haven't seen it, to do it, because we just showed certain points near the end. You do get a chance to see the buildup on the body cams and how this lieutenant expressed his concerns from the very beginning, uh, that he was afraid to get out of the car. He showed his hands. He went to a well-lit area. He did everything uh, that, that, that someone who got pulled over, who, who was afraid of a police officer who was jacked up and out of control, uh, was afraid that if he got out, uh, he was going to end up dead, just like George Floyd. And they, they put him on the ground, uh, and they kept telling him to get on the ground, which I can't even imagine how frightening that must have been. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.